If you had to boil Jesus' ministry or his message down to the simplest bare roots, what would you say? What did he teach? What did he stand for? What was he about? See, a lot of people over the last 2,000 years have kind of put their spin on what he taught, what he did, what he was about. But in you, in your life, in your experience, how would you boil down his message? If you had to boil it down to two or three points, what, was, what do you think were the most important things that he taught? For me, it comes down to three points. And of all the things that he took, and he stood for a lot of things, I think there are three things that shine brighter than all the rest. And for me, the first one is he taught love. He practiced love. He showed us how to love. He stood for love. He, he, he hung out with the people that society said were unlovable, and he taught love over and over again. The second thing he taught that was really just beyond radical, and that he taught it in so many ways, was don't judge. Right? And that, that one's huge. And I, I don't think most... Most of us even can even begin to comprehend how deeply he meant don't judge. And he taught it in so many ways, don't judge. And yet for most of us, that seems to be so much a part of what our ego and our mind do. You know, we have these beautiful minds that have been created and we grew up in a school system that taught critical learning and critical thinking and and the job in critical thinking was to be able to take things apart and say which one was better and which one was best. And, and we got so used to using our mind in this critical analysis way that we, we don't actually know how to be in our own mind with that, that judgmental, critical process always going on. And the third thing that he thought, taught was that this idea, when we mess up on love, when we're not doing such a good job on not judging, he taught forgiveness. He taught us to forgive. And he taught us that forgiveness was sometimes hard and that we couldn't get it done the first time. He went on to say that we were supposed to give seven times 70. That's a lot of times. Is there somebody in your life that maybe you've gotten to try to forgive them two or three times and thank you, you wanted to tap out that that was more than enough? I gave it a good shot. I, I tried to forgive them twice and, and the old boy just keeps acting up and I'm, I tap out, I'm done. So 70 times 70, that's a lot of times to stay in a process until we can get back to love. You know, and that's really hard work for us. And most of us don't really want to work that hard at doing a spiritual process, especially when the old boy doesn't deserve it. <laughs> right? If the old boy deserved it, maybe we would work a little bit harder, but we all know, right? He doesn't deserve it. So like once or twice and boom, we're done. But Jesus kept saying things and, and inviting us to go deeper and to, to practice. And then he, he said crazy stuff, right? He said, judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Like, I, I think that should be printed on every wall of every sanctuary and mosque and temple, because I believe that is the fundamental of how we as spiritual people are called to live is this idea, judge not and you will not be judged. But what's the implication? Right? If you judge by the way you judge, your life will reflect your judgment. If you condemn another, how many of you have ever heard a minister or a religious leader condemn someone that was outside their circle saying that this person was wrong or bad or simple or going to burn in hell Right? And, and, here's, and these, are, these are people that are supposed to represent his teaching. Right? Condemning others. Well, good luck and God bless you. 
right? Because as the measure you give is the measure you get back. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. So then I, I want you to open your heart. Because I want you to see that when we don't judge, it is so much easier to live with an open heart. But the moment we judge anyone, anything, including ourselves, at that moment that we judge anyone or anything, at that moment our heart closes. Now, that's a difference between a perception and a judgment. I can perceive something and keep my heart open. Oh, you have red hair. Or, oh, like you like tacos on Tuesday. But as soon as it becomes a judgment, I want you to see how quickly your heart locks down and it will not open in the presence of We cannot judge another and keep our heart open. We can't even judge ourselves and keep our heart open. That if we want to practice love, the first thing that he said, his great commandment, that we love the Lord our God with all our mind, our heart, our soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, we cannot be in judgment. And it's like, what's my mind going to do for the rest of my life? <laughs> like, what's, my, what's the whole purpose of my ego if I'm not going to judge everybody and everything? And, you know, because I know what's right. And God help them if they don't. Right? So we stay in this place. And he invited us to transcend that place, to open our hearts, to suspend judgment, to open our hearts all the way and just allow love to flow. And, and there's some great scriptures about this. Luke 12, 57 and 59, through 59. Why do you not judge for yourself what is right? As you go with your accuser before the magistrate, make every effort to settle with him on the way. Lest he drag you to the judge, the judge hands you over to the officer, the officer will put you in prison, and I tell you, you will not get out until you've paid every last copper. So by the measure that you judge, you are condemned by that judgment until you've paid for every judgment that you've rendered toward yourself and others. It's just not even the judgment you place out there. You're also condemned by the judgment that you place upon yourself. How many of you have a favorite thing to judge about yourself as wrong or bad? Right? And, and what if that is not spiritual? See, some of us were raised with this idea that if I judge myself first, it won't hurt so bad. Right? I'm just going to judge the heck out of myself first. And then when other people judge me, it's like, yeah, so what? I already know that. Right? But what happens is we actually get in our own way from the infinite goodness of God. In Matthew, it's recorded this way. Make friends quickly with your accuser. Who is your accuser? Right? For most of us, our accuser is on the inside, not the outside. Our accuser is our own mind. Our accuser is our own ego telling us what's right and wrong about us. So make friends with your accuser or you're going with him to court, lest your accuser will hand you over to the judge, the judge to the guard, the guard will put you in prison, and truly I say to you, you will not get out until you've paid every last penny. There's an affirmation that I've been using lately, and the affirmation is just like me. Will you say that with me? Just like me. One more time. Just like me. So this afternoon as I was driving down 7th Street, this wonderful child of God <laughs> was, was making a right-hand turn, right? And he was like, I thought he was going to stay in, in his own lane, right? Which was the far right lane. You're making a right-hand turn onto a busy street. There's cars coming. You, make, you go into the far right lane, and I'm in the center lane, and we're going to just get along great. Well, he thought he could get a little bit out of the center lane, which I happened to think was my lane, <laughs> right? This is my lane, right? And so I had a little bit of a judgment, <laughs> right? And as I'm passing him, I noticed that, what a surprise, 
He's, on, he's looking at his phone. Right? And now I want to feel so superior. I want to feel so righteous. I want to feel so much better than that poor slob who can't get off his phone and just drive so that all of us can be safe and get home safely, right? I want to have a royal tizzy fit. And then there's this attitude, this affirmation pops up in my little noggin that says, just like me. And I have to admit to myself that there are times when I drive distracted, There's times when I don't actually get over to the lane that is appropriate for me to be in. And as much as my ego wanted to lay him out, I realized that by that judgment, I will be judged by everything I do. Just like me. Together? Just like me. So the more that we judge, the more that we are condemned by our own thoughts. Our head closes and our soul doesn't truly open to the possibilities of God. So what if we decide today we are going to suspend judgment? Now here's the point I really want you to hear me make today. If you don't judge, like how many of you have ever been to a discount store? Like in this area, like we got all kinds of discount stores, right? Now, if you go into a discount store, what is the job when you walk into a discount store? You are hunting for something that is worthy of your purchase. Is that true? It's no different than going fishing or hunting. It's the same thing. You're in a store. You're trying to find something that the sleeves are both the same length and actually fits you and right you. You know, that looks like it'll last more than twice through the washing machine. You're trying to find a deal, and you're hunting for your deal, and you're judging everything. You're literally judging everything at warp speed. If you've ever watched somebody who lives or is very good at discount store, they can go through a rack of clothes (laughs) at just a staggering pace staggering, and they actually know what day the new stuff arrives, because you don't want to miss a deal, right? So their little judger is going up 90 miles an hour, and what I want you to see is that many of us are living life just like that. We are looking at everything in our life, judging it, and deciding what we're going to let in and what we're going to keep out. And frankly, it's exhausting because we keep trying to decide what we're going to let into our life and what we're going to try to keep out. And what if tonight you just decide that you're going to suspend your judgment and just move into a state of complete receptivity? What if tonight you decide that you no longer want to live based on your own judgments and you're just going to live wide open? Can you imagine being that vulnerable but also being that free that you don't no longer need to judge life and judge everything in it You just decide that God is in charge and that you are wide open, ready to receive all the good that God has for you. See, many of us have been living from our ego for so long, we don't even understand that there could be another way. We think we're just fine-tuning our judgment so that our judgment gets better and better and better so that we can actually spot the the good deal at 90 miles an hour. But what if you just literally stop judging and just say to life, just say to God, I am wide open and I'm ready to receive. Can you imagine that God could bless you there? That you could actually trust the universe only to bring good and very good into your life. 
that you could be that open, that receptive, that blessed, and allow life to come at you from with a wide open heart that you don't have to judge anything. One of my favorite little books is the book Illusions by Richard Bach that was, came out in the 70s. And usually every summer I read this little book because I love it. It's, you know, it takes me about an hour, an hour and a half to read this little book. I, I get a couple cries throughout the whole book. The ending always gets me. It inspires me. It makes me think. And it's just a, a lovely little book. There's one little section I want to read for you. The, an, the master answered and said, once there lived a village of creatures along the bottom of the great crystal river. The current of the river swept silently over them all, young and old, rich and poor, good and evil, the current doing its own way, knowing its own way, and knowing its crystal self. Each creature, in its own manner, clung tightly to the twigs and rocks at the, of the river bottom. For clinging was their way of life, and resisting the current is what each had learned from birth. But one creature said, At last I am tired of clinging. Though I cannot see it with my eyes, I trust that the current knows where it is going. And I shall let go and let it take me where it will. Clinging, I will surely die of boredom. The other creatures laughed and said, Fool, let go, and that current that you worship will throw you and tumble you and smash you across the rocks, and you will die quicker than a boredom. But the one heeded them not, and taking a breath, let go. And at once was tumbled and smashed by the current across the rocks. Yet in time, as the creature refused to cling to the current, as it refused to cling, the current lifted him free from the bottom, and he was bruised and hurt no more. And the creatures downstream, to whom he was a stranger, cried, See a miracle. A creature like ourselves, yet he flies. See the Messiah come to save us all. And the one carried in the current said, I am no more the Messiah than you are. The river delights to lift us and freeze us. If only we dare to let go our true work, our true voyage, this true adventure. But they cried the more, Savior, save us, all while clinging to the rocks and that they looked again, and he was gone, and they were left alone making legends of a Savior. And it came to pass when he saw that the multitude of throngs went one more day, tightly after Bud, fiercely, they held on, and they were pressed against him, and they healed him without rest, and they were fed and always looking for his miracles. So here's the story. What if Jesus knew what he was talking about? Could be. And what if your spiritual life could be boiled down to three things that are not small things, that are profound things, that are important things, that are transformative things, but three things? What if your spiritual life could be boiled down to three things that you did day in and day out over and over and over again and the act of doing these three things lifted you out of whatever bondage and pain and suffering that you've known in your life and would lift you into a higher level of good that you can even imagine now. And those three things are love. Here's love. Not because it's easy, not because it makes sense, not because the other person deserves it, but you just love because you love. That's your nature is to love. You're created in love. It's your superpower. Your job is to love. And if you're really committed to love, then you can't judge anyone or anything, including yourself, because the moment you judge them, you stop loving them. And so your job in every moment of every day is just to love without judgment. 
And it's like, well, Richard, that's too scary. They, what if they don't deserve it? What if they don't love me back? What if they don't do it right? I'm going to be so vulnerable. Yes, you love without judgment. And when you mess up those two, you forgive. When somebody else messes up those two, you forgive. And you go back to these three things over and over and over again. It's like a little roadmap. What do I do today? Oh, you love. You love, you don't judge, and when you mess up, you forgive. And it could not be simpler. And it couldn't be any harder. Because we want to judge. There's times when we want to close our hearts. There's times when we want everybody to know how stupid they are. And in those moments, we forgive and we go back to loving without judgment. And when we can't do it, we forgive. Over and over and over again. Will you pray with me? And I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to this activity tonight. Like, who would I really be if I just loved? If love really was my superpower? If love was the only thing? And who would I be if I didn't judge myself or others or the moment or the situation and I just lived wide open, ready to receive all the good that God is? And what if when I fall or make a mistake or I don't do it well, I just forgive myself or I forgive others and I forgive in the moment and then I go back, I start over. I love, I don't judge. And when I fall, I forgive. And what if my life could be that simple? That it really was just about loving without judgment. Loving without judgment. Everyone including ourselves. In the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks. And so it is. Amen. There's a